Hiya. Um, it's time to talk about all the books I read in uh, July. My July jumble. And it was a jumble of books that I read. All sorts. Um, I read ten in the end. And I had one, two, three, four were sent by NetGalley. And um, four were physical books. Two of which were Maggie O'Farrell. I read two Maggie O'Farrells this month. So the first one I did, um, I read, was a thriller. And it was a fantastic thriller called The Whisper Man by Alex North. And it's all to do with children going missing. And it's a, a crime that happened 20 years ago, but now seems to be happening again. And it is a real page turner. And I absolutely loved that one. The next one I read was Kate Atkinson's trans, um, Transcription, which is a spy um, book, a book about spies. And we're taken into the world of espionage and MI5. And the story focuses on Juliet Armstrong. And as Kate Atkinson always does, we have different timelines. And we have... Juliet, when she's 18, recruited into MI5. And then we have Juliet after the war in the 1950s when she's working for the BBC. But the, th the arms of the Secret Service are still reaching out for her. So that was an, a quite an interesting read. I like that one. The next one was Net Galley, Night Bitch by Rachel Yoda. And wow, what a book. I, it's... it's all to do with the power of motherhood, the power of women. And it's the story, we never know the character's name. She's always referred to as either the mother or the night bitch. But she feels that she's being transformed into a dog, that motherhood is transforming her into a dog, into a bitch. And wow, it is such an interesting read and it keeps keeps you going it's it's almost magical realism when you've got the woman to, turning into a dog there are some gruesome bits as well and it's you've got sort of like mythology and it's using nature and the power of motherhood and how women are actually magical beings and i agree with that totally we are fantastic the next one was also a net galley one and this was for children and it was called Little Horror by Daniel Pig and it is a really funny adventure story. Daniel Pig is a comedy writer, he writes for the Horrible Histories, that series if you're familiar with that one. And we've got Rita who's a toddler and a super smart toddler because she can read and write and she's got this fantastic power you know she, she can't understand why other toddlers can't read and write like she does and then her parents disappear and little 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 teeny tiny Rita she goes off to find them and meets a villain along the way a really good book for a child next one is also a net galley one and this was Lemon by let me just get the author by Kwon Ye Sun and it's a murder thriller with a difference because you, at the end of it, you don't know who did the murder. It takes place from 2002 to 2019. And in 2002, uh, Kim Dae-on's sister was murdered. And through the book, we had have three different perspectives, the sister's perspective and two friends' perspectives. And... It's almost like an exploration of grief and the effect that this death had on everybody. And don't expect to know who killed um, the sister. You get clues along the way and at the end you think you might know, but do you? It's a real, that's a, a thriller with a difference. And I like that, I really did. Maggie O'Farrell, the first Maggie O'Farrell that I read this month and it was The Vanishing Act of Esme Lennox and this was haunting and heartbreaking. Esme was put into an institution uh, in the 30s, 1930s and she stayed there for 60 years and now she's being released and 
the story is told in different perspectives. We, we go back to Esme's childhood before she was institutionalised. We have her sister. It's an exploration of her life. The, Esme was this independent person who was locked away because she was inventive and independent, but she didn't fit the what was expected of a young lady in the 1930s. And it jumps from narrator to narrator and heartbreaking and haunting. Loved it. Then we go to another NetGalley one and it's The Cat Who Saved Books. And this was so heartwarming. It's by Susuki Natsukawa. I think that's the way you say it. And it's about a teenager. It's almost like a coming of age story. It's a teenager who is left in his father, grandfather's bookshop when the grandfather dies and one day a magical cat comes. The um, Rintaro, the, the young teenager, he's a very introvert teenager and this cat comes along and it's a talking cat and it takes him into a magical labyrinth where Rintaro has to save books and it is such a heartwarming read. It's all about the love of books and friendship and empathy and it asks questions of people who read books. What is the power of a book? I like that one as well. I see I did read some really nice ones this week, this month. Liar by Leslie Pierce was um, my next read and it's set in the 1970s and Amelia finds a body. She's a would-be journalist. She finds a body and she goes investigating to find out more about the victim's family and then there's more murders along the way. Um, I like the story. I like the premise of the story. I just didn't like Amelia so it was a little bit of a disappointment this one was for me. And then another Met Galley one. Cabinet by Unsu Kim and it's a book that I just cannot describe. It's strange, it's bizarre, and it's about a cabinet full of files of people who are evolving in new and strange ways. You've got a man who's got a tree growing out of his finger. You've got people who live on gasoline. You've got people who can transform their memories, who can go into their memories and change them to something that they'd rather have. And it's a very strange book. Um, very bizarre. So I wasn't quite sure what to make of that one. And my final one was a Maggie Fowl, My Lover's Lover. And it's to do, it describes it as um, gothic horror potential. I didn't enjoy it as much as Maggie Fowl's other books. Um, I was left a little bit Mm, with this one. It didn't really move me in the way that others have done. I mean, I'd, I'd read the Esme Lennox one and that was heartbreaking. This one just didn't affect me in the way that her other books have. So that was almost a little bit disappointment. So that was my July jumble, the 10 books that I read. Enjoyed I enjoyed my reading month this month. The book of the month has to be The Whisper Man by Alex North, very closely followed by Night Bitch and um, the Esme Lennox one. They were sort of tied in second place, but The Whisper Man as a thriller, absolutely fantastic. So that was my book of the month. So happy reading. I'll see what I'm up to in August and uh, see you soon. Bye.